The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. the kitchen a minute? Yeah, sure. Do you want to take the garbage out? Uh, yeah, I don't want to, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought you could finish drying the dishes while I get Betsy to bed. Oh, a little early, isn't it? Well, I have to talk to you. What's the matter? Well, just... You know, you've been sort of edgy ever since I got home tonight. Something wrong? Yes, but I can't talk to you until Betsy's in bed. I don't want her to hear. Oh, what's the problem? Well, I can't talk to you now. Well, for Pete's sake, give me a hint or something. Where is Betsy? She's lying on the living room floor with her crayons and coloring books. She can't hear. Well, I, I found a folder today that belonged to that Wallace man. Why? Mr. Wallace, the man from the modeling agency. The one who wants to take Betsy's picture for Tompkins Tonic. What's the matter with you? You would never heard of him. I didn't get but what a... you said you, you found. Oh, the what? a folder, a kind of an envelope folder. Must have dropped down behind the desk when Mr. Wallace was here last week. Yeah? Well, he has called me a couple of times to see if I had found it. And now that I think back, he was rather excited about it, but I looked all over, and I said I didn't have it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well I'm so mad at him. I just, I'm just furious. I'm just, now, look, now, look, now, now, never, honey, whatever it is, it can't be that important. Look, nothing is that important. Well, it, it, you know, I was thinking today, we get all excited about things. We ought to relax more and take it easy. We'll all live longer, you know. <laughs> I am so mad at Mr. Wallace that I could just... Just shoot him. Now, now, honey, darling. Wait till you hear. When I was cleaning today, I found this big envelope, a really big sort of, you know, manila-type envelope that opens on the side, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it must belong to you. And I opened it up because I thought I'd phone you and tell you what was inside in case you needed it at your office, you know. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I looked looked over the papers and some letters, and I couldn't make head nor tail of it. And then something caught my eye, and I started reading them. Well, did well, you know then they belonged to Mr. Wallace? Yeah, I certainly did. Well, I hope and you put I everything did... right back in the envelope. I read everything in it. Well, you, you shouldn't read other people's mail. What's no, the matter I... with you? That's a terrible thing to do. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised at you. I am, really. That, that's not like you at all. Now, you listen. Honey, I don't I, care I... what was in it. That is not a nice thing to do. Now, really, I'm a little shocked at you. Don't you want to know what was in it? I do not. It's none of my business. No wonder you didn't want Betsy to know that her mother had been snooping Well, into... I'm going to put Betsy to bed, and then whether you want to hear what was in that envelope or not, I'm going to tell you. Well, Betsy finally fell asleep. I had to read four stories to her, but I wanted to make sure she was asleep before I told you about yeah, this. Yeah, I'm very busy right now writing some reports for the office, well, so... I want to tell you. Darling, I don't that... want to hear. I have no business knowing what's in an envelope belonging to Mr. Wallace. I wasn't joking when I said that I was shocked at you. I, I am, really. I certainly do not care to hear any more about it. Well, all right. All right. Well, I guess I'll read the paper. What would you do with it? Oh, here it is. Should be a write-up on the Wilkins girl. She got married today. Let's see. What was in the envelope? Thought you didn't want to hear. I don't, but you're so upset, maybe, well, just maybe I ought to hear. Although, as I said, dear, nothing is so important that you have to get that upset well, about I it. Well, I suppose not, but I... I did, anyhow, and I want you to remember that when Betsy and I were downtown in the very beginning, when all this started, and Mr. Wallace came up and spoke to me and said he was from a modeling agency in Chicago, and you remember I told you he kept raving about what a darling little girl Betsy was, you remember that? Yes, yes, sure. Remember I told you how he kept insisting she'd be perfect to advertise Tompkins Tonic? Yes, yes, darling, I, I know all that. Well, I, I found out why she's so perfect to advertise Tompkins Tonic. Why? <laughs> why? Because he thinks Betsy is puny looking and unattractive. <laughs> puny looking and unattractive? And sort of unhealthy looking, I guess. Unhealthy? That's what, well, 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 what, what are you well, talking about? Well, it seems that Betsy looks quite a bit like some other little girl whose picture they have, only that child is supposed to be absolutely beautiful. I can't see it myself. Now, wait a minute, will you? Wait, wait, yeah, now, wait a minute. I, I don't get this at all. If they're advertising a, a, a vitamin tonic for children, why would they want a child that they think is, is, is puny and unhealthy looking? Well, don't you see? You know how these advertisements are sometimes, before and after taking? Well... Betsy is supposed to be the before taking. <laughs> I'll kill him. Well, 
honey. I... You only wanted to shoot him. I'm going to do well, it. Now, don't talk like that. As you said, I suppose nothing's so important. We should get our well, that, 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 that like this. How do you know all this? Apparently. How do you know all apparently this? Apparently what he left here was this for his folder about the whole thing. There's letters to people about it. The agency, I suppose, and notes, and then a kind of thing that shows how the ad was going to be, you yeah, know. And the layout, the layout, layout, I suppose. I don't know what you call it. It's there. And there's a picture of this other child. Well, I know I shouldn't have snooped through all Mr. Wallace's papers. Where's I, the I envelope? Where well, is it's, it? It's on the desk under the magazine there. I know I shouldn't have done it, dear. I felt guilty all the time. I really... Don't just dump everything out of Get. the envelope like that. Get away. Get away. Oh, now you've got the papers all mixed up. I was so careful not Get to away. disturb the arrangement so he wouldn't know I saw... Here, let me put them back. Let where is this? Back. this whatever it is. That, where is it that he says Betsy is puny and unattractive and unhealthy looking? Where does oh. it say that? Well, it's here somewhere. Where? It's a carbon copy of a letter to his boss, apparently, at the agency. And I don't know that he used those exact words, but that is what it amounts to. Find the letter. Find it. Said you didn't want to read something that was none of your business. Find here, the you letter, I tell you. Of... Puny, huh? Well, let me look. She is small, but I've always thought of Betsy as delicate and dainty, like a Dresden doll. Why, our friends have always said that about her, you know. Unattractive, huh? Why, when she was down at your office the other day, your secretary mm -hmm. said that Betsy was, was like a little fairy princess. Yeah, an unhealthy looking. J -j Just find me where it says well, that. Just a minute, I'm looking. You well, know, hurry Betsy, up. Betsy does not have much color in her face, but I asked the doctor about that once, and he said not to worry. You know, some children have roses in their cheeks, and some don't. Oh, here's the letter. Here it is. Oh, here it is. Uh, here, let me, here, let me, here, let me here, see here. it. Look. Tell George not to worry. I found the perfect kid for the other picture. She is a dead ringer for the other model we got and will be ideal for the ad since she is sort of a puny kid. Very ordinary looking. Ordinary? Well, oh, that's what he said. He didn't say unattractive. He said ordinary. Well, it's just as bad, for Pete's sakes. Betsy is certainly not an ordinary looking child. Well, I should say, I was so mad. I saw that. Then he goes on. The resemblance is amazing, and since no names will be used, I know we can get by implying the two pictures are the same child before and after taking Topkins Tonic. Uh, Janice Lorenz will really look the picture of health compared to this kid. Uh, and there's a picture here of this, this Janice Lorenz that Betsy is supposed to look let me like. See, let here. me see. Here's the picture. Um, right. Betsy's supposed to look like like this? Well, there's no resemblance at all. Well, I didn't think so. Of course, they both have their hair braided in pigtails, and there is something about the eyes, I suppose. But this child is older, and she looks sort of heavy to me. I heavy? Well, well, she's I as say. husky as a... She looks like King Farouk. Who? Oh, the former king of Egypt. That, that, oh, that. oh, well, now, dear, I know we're mad about it, but let's be fair. In right? my opinion, child. this child is too fat. Is that called healthy... Well, I suppose they're showing how Tompkins Tonic can build up a child. She's supposed to be the picture of health compared to Betsy, I guess. Listen, is this, is this Wallace guy in town now? Yes, he called today. He's bringing out the photographer tomorrow to take Betsy's picture since they didn't get it last week. Oh, 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 didn't tell you the rest? Here at the end of another letter. Wait a minute, where is it? He says something about us. About us? Yes. He calls us local yokels. Local yokels. Show me. Show me where he says that. Where's he say right that? Here, right here. I hate to deal with these local yokels who know nothing about this business, local but we need the kid. Yokels. Right, right there. The father, I doubt, will cause me much trouble, but you know how mothers can be when they want to show off their kid. They're a real pain in the neck. Well, that's the gist of it, dearie. Calls me a pain in the neck on top of everything else. Where is he staying? The Bradley Hotel. But you can't let him know we know, then he'll know we looked through his papers. I shall tell him we saw his papers and how we happened to do so. So, he doesn't anticipate any trouble with the father. <laughs> well, look, you just call a babysitter because we're going to call on Mr. Wallace. <laughs> Let me tell you something else, Mr. Wallace. No, please, I... please. <laughs> Let's lower our voices, eh? I wouldn't want the hotel to think I was having a wild party. Throw me out. Puny. <laughs> Puny calling my child... No, 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 no. I, I an, didn't... An, 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 an ordinary, ordinary. An ordinary. ordinary. Say, 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 saying Betsy was an ordinary child. No, 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 no. I didn't mean ordinary in, in that sense. An, an unhealthy looking... No, just, I never said that. Just... No, no, no. Why, why, your daughter is an, an adorable child. Yeah. You misunderstood. I didn't say she looked unhealthy. I... Now, now let me explain... I... I will let you explain. Go ahead. Yes, yes, I will. You see, what I meant was that your child is really quite 
quite beautiful, but I could tell that pictures never do her justice. I'm sure. Betsy takes wonderful pictures. Well, now, now, dear, now, dear, she doesn't always. Well... Mr. Wallace is is right about that. We have said many times pictures don't show how pretty Betsy really is. There, now, we... there, there, you see? And for our purpose, that's what we want, particularly since she does resemble the other model. Well, I'm not going to have an unflattering picture of my daughter shown in magazines all over, whether the names are on it or not. That is right. The deal is off. Come on, dear. Come on. We'll have nothing more to say to Mr. Wallace. If Tompkins Tonic is so wonderful, why do you have to fake your advertisements? Yes. It even sounds illegal. Look, d- d- don't even bother talking to him, dear. Come on, come on. I just want to show him I can be a real pain in the neck. Yes. Just a moment. I am truly sorry you both feel this way. I have done nothing illegal. This is done all the time. Well, why do you think I was willing to pay such a fantastic price? because we've looked for a long time for just the right child. Now, my job depends on completing this deal. I should like to remind you that a contract was signed, and it's binding unless you wished my company to sue. Now, I have nothing more to say. Good night. We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. Give your smile twice as much exercise each weekday. Join us for both of CBS Radio's Arthur Godfrey shows. As number one mischief maker on Godfrey Time, Arthur sparks one delightful surprise after another. The gang is always ready to follow the leader in the direction of fun. With Arthur as the leader, you can't help but have fun. You'll get a kick out of the comedy. You'll get a charge out of the songs. And more than anything, you'll enjoy the good company of Arthur Godfrey. Later each weekday, he turns up in another package of pleasure... Our Ford Road Show, starring Arthur Godfrey. Bert Farber and the Oxtra are in charge of the music on this one. And the rest is up to Godfrey himself. A situation he handles perfectly. Every Monday through Friday, get in on all the fun with Arthur Godfrey. Join us for CBS Radio's Arthur Godfrey Time. Be with us later on in the day when most of these same stations bring you the Ford Road Show, starring Arthur Godfrey. <laughs> Yeah, all right, Ann. Yeah, have Jack call me when he gets in. Thank you. <clears throat> Seems to me we're calling Jack more and more lately to get free legal advice. What will I do if Wallace shows up tomorrow to take Betsy's picture? Well, wait till we see what Jack says. And, boy, I told you at the beginning of this weeks ago not to get involved. But, no, no, you were so flattered and I... <sighs> That's... Well, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean that. I, I guess I was just as flattered and... Well, we've got to get out of it some way. Think of what it would do to Betsy psychologically if she ever saw the advertisement and understood it. Yeah, of course, Wallace, as much as admitted they were going to use a bad picture of her. Well, contract or no contract, whatever they do, I won't let him take the picture, but that isn't what bothers me. Isn't Betsy attractive? I mean, I know she's not beautiful, but she is healthy, and she isn't puny. I mean, wouldn't you say she's dainty? Yes, yes, of course, of course she's dainty. Trouble is, how does any parent really know what his child looks like to other people? I've never heard of a mother or father who said, my kid is homely as a mud fence. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let this be a lesson to us. I have to laugh when I think of how we even daydreamed that somebody in Hollywood might spot Betsy's picture, you know, and it'd (laughs) be... Yeah, Yeah, well, honey, maybe we're lucky. We've learned early not to push Betsy into being something she isn't. (laughs) Yes, Mm -hmm. dear. Well, I think I'll get ready for bed. Puny. Puny. Now, honey, you have got to forget about it. Yeah, but I just... The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Alexander Clark as Mr. Wallace and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz, inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door.